What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to learn how to integrate Horizon Calendar from Airbnb. It's an open source calendar package into your application. It's what Airbnb uses in their own app and it's pretty customizable and looks pretty awesome. So before we get started, drop a like down below, hit subscribe if you're new here and into iOS and let's jump right in. So we are going to open up Xcode, of course, and start by creating a new project here. We'll stick with the app template and I'm going to go ahead and call this app my calendar. Super creative, I know. We'll stick with Swift as a language and storyboard, aka UI kits as the interface. I'll toss it onto my desktop here. And first things first, let me just full screen this. We'll close that right panel. And I'll go ahead and give this a build and run in our simulator just to make sure that it is in fact showing up here. Just bear with um, Xcode compiling super slowly. And then we are going to bring on in the uh, actual package, which I believe actually I've got the URL copied of already. So we're gonna go to file, we'll hit add packages. You can copy the uh, URL to it to the repo and just paste it here. It'll resolve it momentarily if you just bear with it. And we should see our simulator pop up somewhere here. Looks like it's popped up right here. So I'll go ahead and paste that on in, um, remove it rather, I should say. All right, looks like it's taking its time today. And while it's doing that, we actually found Horizon Calendar in the packages here. So I'll go ahead and add it, bear with it while it fetches from the repo. And let's see, all right, so we've got our app running over here, which is great. And the first time you actually bring this in, it might take a few seconds. I might fast forward it if it takes too long, but it looks like it didn't take that long. So we are good to go. Let's just go to our view controller here and uh, import Horizon Calendar. And we'll just make sure we can still build. So we'll say import Horizon Calendar. I'll stop this and give it a run once more. And it'll build with the respective dependency. Alrighty, the reason this is taking so long actually is because I think I updated Xcode to support 14.2. Uh, so cool, so now that we've got this, let's start by creating a basic calendar and then we'll talk a little bit about customization. So the actual uh, Horizon Calendar package gives you something called a calendar view, super creatively named. So I'm gonna say create calendar and we'll define this function down here. We'll say private func create calendar. And the first thing we want to do is say our view, let me call it calendar view, is going to be a calendar view like so. And we want to create it with initial content. This is the important part. So initial content is going to be a calendar view content. And I'll create this right above. So I'm just going to call it content. So here we're going to say content is going to be calendar view content, just like that. And we're going to specify a particular calendar, visible date range, AKA from what start to what end do we want to show it as well as a month layout. So calendar here is in fact uh, defaulted to Gregorian, but what we are going to do here is uh, use our own definition up above in a moment. So here I'll say calendar. This is going to be let calendar will be calendar.current, which should be Gregorian on my simulator. The visible date range we want to create, so what I'm going to do here is we'll say start date will be calendar, and we want to get a date from the calendar. So let's see, let me spell that correctly, and autocomplete should pick it up. And we're going to say date from uh, date components, and we can specify just a year, month, and day here. So here we'll say date components. And we want to have a year, we want a month as well. So let me do that. So we'll say year, month, and day. So year will be 2022, we'll do 2020 actually. And month will be one and day will be one as well. We'll copy and paste this and perhaps we'll do here uh, 2022, month will be 12 and day will be 31. And let me just change this here to be our end date like so. And now that we've got this, we can actually use the range operator to say start date dot 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 through our end date like so. And the last thing we want here is to specify how we want this calendar to look. We want it to be vertical and options. We can just specify the default option. So here we have vertical month layout options. You can just instantiate it. We can say vertical month layout options like so, and that should be good to go. And let's see why this is going to get me value of optional type date must be unwrapped. Makes sense. Okay. So what I'll go ahead and do is just force these and compile and we should be good to go. Okay. Awesome. 
So now that we've got this created, we do want to actually add it as a subview and lay it out. So the first thing we'll do here is say translates uh, auto resizing mask into constraints will be false. And then we'll just add some constraints down here, which is uh, the same for any view that you are adding as a subview. So we'll say activate some constraints. And I'm just going to pin this to all four sides of our uh, view controller's view. So we'll say top anchor will be a constraint equal to view safe area layout guide top anchor and for sake of simplicity and being quick i shall copy and paste this a few times we'll say left anchor right anchor bottom anchor and just don't forget to update it accordingly on the left hand side and let's go ahead and give this a run and let's see if we get a calendar so we should see a calendar it looks like we don't in fact see it we see actually a crash here so let's see what the heck happened I will debug this, um, you know, in real time. So looks like UI layout guide. Ah, the reason it's yelling at me is forgot, I forgot to do a uh, add subview and it's saying we can't add constraints. So we'll say view, add subview, calendar view. All right, go ahead and give that a run. And boom, we get a pretty nifty looking calendar. So we can actually scroll down. And of course it's vertical as we expected it to be. Now, there's actually a ridiculous number of ways to customize how this looks, and specifically, you do it on the calendar content. You can actually use a day provider, and that day provider, you can customize the model um, and how every single uh, day cell will look. So you can say day provider, and here we actually get a day in. And if you actually look at the signature of this closure, you get a day model in and you want to specify a any calendar item model, which is basically a type erase protocol for a particular day representation of how the render should look. Now this gets a little into the weeds, so I do want to call out some of the other options. It's a little simpler to actually uh, specify. So there's day ratios. You can also have an item provider similar to the day provider to customize. You can do the actual separator type. You can set up the horizontal spacing the inter-month spacing. So let's say we want the month spacing here to be higher. I can say make it 100. And if we continue to look at these options, there's also the month header item provider. If you want it to look customized, I know Airbnb using that uses this specifically. You can also specify overlays. So for example, if you want to build a reservation kind of app and show that you know certain days are selected and arranged, you can do that, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's basically how to set up this uh, calendar. And uh, it does escape me if this has a delegate, but I believe it does. It has both a way to get the actual selection as well as the uh, changes in selection. So let's see if I can find it. It looks like it's not a delegate quite off of this. So let's click into this and let's see what this offers. And if I can't find it, I'll, uh, I'll toss into the comments what else it offers. So it looks like Let's jump back to this one to jump to the definition. We'll jump to this and then we'll jump to this. And here is the definition. Of course, we've got our initializer here. We have also got our layout class. We can do oh day selection handler. Okay, this is what I was looking for. So we can also do a day selection handler. And if we look at the signature of this, this is basically day in. So we can specify day in and day is a model. So off of day, we can actually get the day, which is an integer, we can get the components. So I will actually print out selected, or let me actually say describing that. And what I'll say is selected, and we'll add a space there. And we'll say this is output. And I will simply, for the sake of this video, print out the output. So let me just go ahead and give that a run. Let me open up our console here in Xcode and let's go select a date. So we're gonna pick the 29th of January right there. And of course, as you expect, we get uh, the components out, which is the year, the era, the day, month, as well as if it's a leap year. So that's basically we'll, where we'll leave it. One last really important thing that I do wanna call out is I believe iOS 16, if not 16, then 15, did introduce a component called a UI calendar view. So some of you might be wondering, well, why would I use this Airbnb thing if we already have a Apple provided UI kit UI calendar view? And the answer is, is that it comes down to your needs. So UI calendar view does have a, you know, very Apple-esque 
implementation. We've got a delegate on here. We can specify behavior, locale, calendar, time zone, etc., etc. One thing that I will mention is that the Airbnb variant is far more customizable, and you know, just because of their own needs, they've gone ahead and made it incredibly uh, flexible. So, for example, you'll see on their documentation here that you can specify, you know, a design where you can have search a search in a calendar. You can do stay availability. You can do you know, a list of multiple selected dates. You can do um, reservation experiences like their app. So they're, they're basically showing, you know, what they offer. But if you actually read through their incredibly thorough documentation, you'll see the actual uh, things that are available for you. So I did want to call that out since I'm sure some of you guys are in fact thinking about it. That is all I've got for today's video. I appreciate you watching. If you got all the way through, drop a like down below. It really helps the channel out. If you're not subscribed and into iOS, definitely subscribe. More than like 75% of viewers aren't subscribed, but do consistently watch. And of course, leave a comment down below. Helps video reach as well as uh, YouTube algorithm pushing it out to others. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.